the, in the words that no one has put in your mouth. Tell him how you love him this morning. Tell him words of encouragement. Just worship him in his words. Tell him that he's great, he's mighty. Father, we thank you so far for the time you've given us in this place this morning, oh God. Even as we go, move into the next phase, we pray for your grace to abound, increasing, oh God. For your glory to come down, for your touch, that none of us will remain the same this afternoon, oh God. We pray for your word to come and permeate the members of our bodies and catch and touch our inner selves, oh Lord. That may be revived, that may be regenerated, that may be empowered, that will be set free by your power. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. You may have your seats quickly. Praise God. Amen. We thank God for the grace He's given us to be in this place. Thank you so much for coming. Um, just to recap on what Pastor Frank was saying. Yes, we have those programs. The food bank serves the community here. But we do emphasize that even when you come on Sunday, we say this on Thursdays, but if you come on Sunday, we don't stop people coming from any other day if you're here. You can come and use it. It serves the community. Um, next Sunday, Pastor didn't um, announce this. Next Saturday, this coming Saturday, we as men, we are coming here uh, to sit down from 12 o'clock and encourage each other. It's only men. Praise God. So if you are a little there, you can ask your man to come. Encourage them to come. Go and come here, have words, encourage each other, and then go back home shopping. Praise God. Yeah, and eat food. You're going to come here, thump our chests as well, roar like lions, feel big, and then go back home. And then I'll probably go back in our corners or somewhere there. But yeah, I just ask you to come, encourage, invite somebody. We had um, announced that. Um, we have a visiting pastor, visiting bishop from America coming this Sunday. But he sent me a message this morning and he said one of the parties, the person they are traveling with, lost his or her man, one of them. So they won't be traveling because um, um, all of a sudden uh, somebody lost their man and they've got to grieve with them. So they are postponing their visit to London until sometime in the future we shall announce. Praise God. Uh, but we have our programs running next week and then uh, we have a marriage conference coming up on the 23rd I encourage you to come and be part of that for those who are married and those who are just about to get married 23rd of February next, next, this month and on the 24th which is a Sunday service we, we, we plan to host the Watoto Church Choir here with us We are busy this month, but we are busy for the Lord. Amen. And um, because the devil is busy as well, breaking us apart, but we are busy for the Lord. Amen. 24th on the Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, they're going to be a part, be part of our worship. Amen. And then they're going to be performing for us as well. So invite someone. Invite someone. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. This year we believe is a year of great things. First, I do understand the cake was eaten, but... Uh, until we eat that one and just exactly like the other one. <laughs> Praise God. It has to be exactly the same. But, but we thank God for that. Praise God. Amen. Pastor Fred sends greetings. Um, and and um, he loves you so much. He's still on mission. Probably sends you messages as well. People are getting saved. People are being touched. Um, we can send him a message of encouragement and even support as we journey this life of salvation in our missions. Praise God. Amen. Can we open our Bibles quickly, the book of um, Joshua chapter 7. Welcome our new uh, visitors. Our sister, you're so much welcome. We're going to pick a few verses, but I want to be preaching about the whole chapter. Um, but the people of Israel broke faith. Joshua 7 verse 1. In regard to the devoted things, for Achan, the son of Kami, son of Zabdi, and son of Zerah, 
of the tribe of Judah took some of the devoted things and the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Aven, east of Bethel, and said to them, Go up and spy out the land. And the men went up and spied out Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not have all the people go up, but let, up, let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not make the whole people toil up there, for there are few. So about three thousand men went up there from the people, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai killed about thirty-six of their men, and chased them before the gate of the gate as far as Sebrine, and struck them at the descent. And the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening. He and the elders of Israel, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you brought these people over the Jordan at all to give us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would that we had been counted to dwell beyond the Jordan? O Lord, what can I say? When Israel turned their backs before the enemies, for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear for it and will surround us and cut out our men, our name from the earth. And that will and what will you what will you do for your great name? The Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why have you fallen on your face? Israel has sinned. They have transgressed my covenant that I commanded them. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have sown and lied and put them among their own belongings. Therefore, the people of Israel cannot stand before the enemies. They turn their backs before the enemies because they have become devoted for destruction. I will be with you no more unless you destroy the devoted things from among you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Um, the whole chapter is quite interesting. I don't know whether you've ever read it, but I believe um, most of you have read about Joshua and um, the things that he did. Praise God. Amen. Last week we saw the children of, or no, last week, the last time I was here, told you about how Joshua led the children of Israel into the promised land. Um, we know of the journey which began in the land of Egypt when God came and spoke to um, Moses, his, um, his servant. Um, because God is reminding Moses of the promises that promised um, Abraham about 400 years before. And that's our God. He keeps his promises. He never forgets. He comes in his own time and saves us. 400 years before he had spoken to Abraham and said that I'm going to take you, I'm going to give you this land. And he showed him the land of the Canaanites. And he said, I won't give it to you now, but I'll give it to you in my due time. He takes them, the journey is quite quite long, some of you have read about it, but he takes them about eight, about 12 um, tribes, about 80 people, he takes them into, um, into, into the land of Egypt for refuge to be kept there. But in actual sense, God was incubating them. And the Bible says, the Bible shows that it was about 400 years of God's silence when he was saying nothing. And during that time, there are times of good times and then there are times of affliction where they're being afflicted and they cried and cried unto the Lord because they're being afflicted. But for 400 years, God was silent. Never saying anything, but doing things. Because in those times, he was incubating them and expanding them. You know, sometimes the silence of God does not mean that he's not working. He is doing something. He was doing something. And sometimes, you know, we've grown up in this generation, especially if you live in urban centers, there's a lot of noise, a lot of people making a lot of sound. But sound does not necessarily mean there is a result. God was silent in 400 years, saying nothing. But then, those are some of the most productive years for the children of Israel. Because his purpose was to make a nation out of them. Eight people, but he made a nation. Praise God. Amen. We saw that he took them out by the hand of Moses, led them through the wilderness for 40 years. And it comes a time when Moses is dead, and then Joshua, Joshua comes onto the scene. When we saw in chapter 1, when God comes and says to, says to Joshua that, Be of courage, do not fear, I'm going to be with you. 
as I was with Moses, so I'm going to be with you. Amen. Funny thing is, when Joshua comes onto the scene, he does not do the same things that Moses did. But yet God says that I am with you as I was with Moses. Now in my mind, I would have thought that, you know what, I'm going to do exactly what Moses did. But God has got different methods. Different methods of working. But for the same purpose. Mm. Praise God. Amen. You know, sometimes when you come here, sometimes we are, um, we are here dancing and every one of us has got their own style. <laughs> I see Pastor Frank has got his, his own style. <laughs> I've got my style somewhere over, somewhere over there, but you're all praising God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And then I see some of my sisters there. I see Sister Maria, she's got good moves. Amen. But we are all praising God. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. So God comes and then he impacts Moses and Joshua, but he's doing it in a different way. He's saying, now I want you to go and take the children of Israel to the land I promised Moses, I promised Abraham. That's why I like the Joshua, Joshua generation, because we are the Joshua generation. We are takers, we are entering our promises. Moses was good, but Moses was about promises. Preparing the people to come into the land. We are the generation that God has made that we enter into our promises. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The method changes altogether now because Moses is Moses is gone. Moses, my servant, is gone. Now it's the time for Joshua. And we saw last time when Joshua comes onto the scene, he leads the children of Israel, they cross the river Jordan. The presence of God going before them. They come across Jericho. Now the plan is falling into place all of a sudden. They come before Jericho. We saw the Jericho wall. They went around Jericho wall. Remember the Jericho wall? And now they approached it because we say that in your life there are going to be walls all the time. But with God you are going to overcome them. Praise God. Amen. What did we say about the walls? Remember? One thing, what was the first thing? The presence of God. That the presence of God goes before you. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let man go before you. Don't let your thinking go before you. Don't let your degrees, however good they are, and I'm not saying that you should not go to school, but you're not depending on our degrees to take us there. Amen. It's the presence of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the one I said, did we say? Order. 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 Now we say silence. There was silence there which is order. They were in order. Praise God. Amen. We gather our lives together. Order. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you order? Are you in order? Amen. Because you talked about things like discipline. Yes. Praise God. We, we have to have, uh, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we, we say that empty teens let it make a lot of noise. <laughs> and we talked about order and discipline in life. We are called the disciples of Christ. We are disciples, and the word disciple comes from discipline. You know, I came to understand that even medicine is a discipline. Do you know how long it takes to start to become a doctor? You have to be disciplined, waking up every morning for five years, cutting those frogs, saying, ah, you have to be a disciplined person. Studying all that because it takes a disciplined life. Going to bed certain times, Waking up certain times, you have to have some kind of order. Being married takes discipline. One year, 20 years, you have to be ordered in life. You can't just come back anytime you want to. It is my house, I'm a man, I'm coming up by anytime I want, three o'clock. You'll be locked outside. Praise God. I'm a man, no one asks me, my friend. You'll find the locks changed. <laughs> You have to have a disciplined life for you to be successful in life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No one becomes successful by accident. No. Their life is ordered. When you reach and read about the biographies of those successful people, billionaires, they live a disciplined life. And the thing is today, we don't have discipline in life. No one wants to talk about anything. It's my life, you know, I'm 16. I can do whatever I want to do. <laughs> I can drink whatever I want to drink. Oh, no. You are drinking your life, your life to failure. Mm. Step by step, you keep continue drinking, you, you drink to failure. Mm. You have to live a disciplined life. Mm. 
for a successful person, there must be desperate in life. I said that with all authority. Yeah. No one succeeds by accident. Yeah. You have to have a discipline yeah. life. Yeah. Even Christianity takes discipline. Yes, it does. You can't just come and do whatever you want to do. Mm. There is order in the kingdom of God. Amen. There is order. Mm. There are certain things there. You know what? For me, I'm also born again. You know, you know Miriam tried it with Moses. Mm. Remember Miriam? Mm. She came and said, Does God speak to only you? Mm. We also see visions and dreams. Mm -hmm. Who do you think you are? And she ended up with she ended up with prose. And with prose is when every part of your body is breaking away. And you live a disciplined life. No order in your life and every part is breaking away from your body. You have a degree you can't even find it in where you're working. So how do I end up cleaning when I've got all these three HDs? Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. We say discipline, order in your life. Have some kind of order. Have some kind of discipline. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, sometimes you live a life where you go to bank to make it work. <laughs> you know, in those type of cars, yeah? <laughs> you, to close the door, you've got to lift up a bit and then close it and then bang it for it to start. And some of us are like that. For you to work, we've got to kind of, you know, handle you in a certain way and then make you, like, you know, hype you up a bit and then, you know, okay, now they're they okay now. Yeah. And sometimes you people there and say, no, no, not today. <laughs> it won't work today. Hallelujah. Amen. And we came to understand that the devil loves chaos. Amen. Everywhere there is disorder, that's the work of the devil. Yeah. You come to a house and there is disorder, that's the work of the devil. You come to a community and there's disorder. That's the work of the devil. When your life is confused, I guarantee you that's not Jesus at you at work in your life. That's the devil working. Yeah. Praise God. You come to church and you're totally confused. That's the work of the devil. And sometimes our lives are so disordered that you don't know where you're going. You start off done when you're really excited. I'm yeah. doing IT this year. I'm going to complete this case. Halfway through the year, you're doing a counseling. <laughs> right down there, you, you know what? The counseling, I'm doing it now. I'm doing journalism. Journalism is really good. By the end of the year, you have done nothing. And that's the devil at work in your life. Yeah. <laughs> Causing disorder. You touch this, you don't finish it. You touch that one, even if it's marriage. Today you were in this Mr. Kajo's house and then in the next year you were somewhere else. At your grave, you know when you're writing, they say she, she, was, she was married. This person and this person and the names, the, the, the gravestone is not enough for the names. Because there was no order in your life. And that's only the work of the devil causing chaos in your life. But I come here with authority and I'm saying that in the name of Jesus Christ, there's going to be order in your life. Amen. We are casting out every demon Amen. that we are able to come across those walls and pull them down in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why Jesus came and died for us. That we may have order in our lives. That we may have our lives together and be overcomers. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know whether I have the church today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible shows us in book chapter 6 that the walls eventually fall down. But you know the funny thing is that in the first six days they went around the walls once in silence and they went back home. Mm. Same thing every day and they went back home in order. But on the seventh day the order changed. You know, God is strange. Mm. That sometimes get used to our traditions, yeah, yeah. and we resist even when God comes and tells you now you've got to be different. Mm. And the number one killer among men is traditions, <laughs> because we get used to doing things the certain way. Yes. <laughs> Especially Africans, as Pastor said. <laughs> I'll change it. I'll slightly twist what he said and make Africans. <laughs> Praise God. If we came to church one Sunday morning mm. and all the chairs we are facing that way mm. and the pulpit was at the back, mm. 
I guarantee none of you will stay here. You will walk out and say, what's going on? That's not the way we're used to things. What's the pastor? What's wrong with the pastor? I think the pastor is possessed because we resist change. And I've known one thing, the number one thing constant in our lives is change. If you saw my picture when I was five, I was a cute boy. <laughs> Afro hair and all that. Oh, really? But as time goes, the hair disappears. <laughs> now I'm coming and say, where's my hair? Change is constant. Is. I'm not the same person I was yesterday. Yeah. When I was young, I could jump over those walls. Now I walk at it, I look for where the gate is. <laughs> You walk around and then it's always like, where's the door? But before you did quite, but the constant thing is change. change. Mm. On the seventh day, it says to them, go around the wall seven times. Mm. If I was there, I said, what's the just from now? Leave us alone. Mm. Don't make us try. <laughs> Why seven days? Why seven times? Seven times. Seven times. And on the seventh day, it said, shout. Yeah. Because God is always there to shock you. Hallelujah. You can never get used to God. You can never get used to it and say, no, what I know, I know about it. We come here, we worship two songs, and that's it. Mm -hmm. No. Being for a shock every single morning, you come Hallelujah. in. Because God is always going to change his methods. Mm -hmm. He is the same God, but different methods. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you there, church? Yes. yes. Even if you're married to someone, you want some kind of shock sometimes. You come in the morning and say, hey, today we are going to some, we are going somewhere, we are going out. Mm. Same routine every single time. There was order there, seven days, six days, and all of a sudden God shocks them. Be prepared for a shock every single time with God. Mm. Because you can't be used to him all the same time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the walls come down. Hallelujah. Amen. And now chapter seven, as we pick it up, they are saying now, wow, we crossed the river Jordan. We've pulled down the walls. Things are better. We are going to die. And number one thing Joshua does to them, he says, you know what? Before we go to I, go and spy that land. Somebody says spy. Spy. Go and spy the land. God has given them the land, but they've got to spy it. Hmm. It doesn't sense. make sense to me. No. God gave me that city. I'm going to eat it. No, Joshua, his wisdom says, go and spy the land first. Because what is killing us, we do not spy over where we are going. You need to spy the land you are going to occupy. How does it operate? What are the systems of success? And we don't do that. You are going to set up a church in an area like Eltham, get to know what is dwelling in that place. Which are the demons that are controlling that area. You've got to learn. What are the systems like? You're getting a house in an area. Learn about the success rate of that area. What are the schools like? Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We don't. We don't gather information. Gather enough information about where you're going. You're getting married to this handsome man. Get to know about them. Yeah? Because what you see here is the edited version of Mr. Kajo. I show you only the parts you want. I want you to see. Yeah? You don't see how ash my skin is because I put on some kind of oil. This is the edited version. And somebody said that, you know, when people are dating, they bring their edited self. They don't bring that <laughs> abusive person, controlling person. Hi, how are you doing today? You look really smart. You know what? I think, yeah, who is your mother? You really look nice. And that's, <laughs> even some of, sometimes the voices change. And you say, this is the one. This is the one. Send some spies there. <laughs> to know some of the skeletons. Because people change within a year. And you say, is, is it she? I thought she was. You ask. Jacob. Jacob was excited. He took Leah to his house. In the morning, he thought he has had Rachel. In the morning, it was different. You know, I was saying, how stupid was Jacob? How can you take a woman and you don't get to know this is the woman? But I've seen pictures of women putting on makeup. 
And you look at them on the long hair. And they see you, show you the before and the after. And you say, I know where Jacob is coming from. <laughs> Sorry, women. <laughs> you take one person in the house. Jacob was in it for a shock. And you see the woman who was so silent and quiet. And then you say, in the home, she's shouting. Where are the husbands? And you say, she's as if she's talking to the neighbors. And you say, is this the same person I was dating? You need to spy the land where you're going to occupy. Need to have met so many students who have done a degree. And after the degree, they don't even know what to do. Because they did a degree without researching about it. And they just did a degree because there was a pressure of doing a degree. Not knowing the opportunities out there for that particular work. You need to spy where you're going. And we are so blinded that we don't know where we are going. We have come to London. We don't even know how the system works. You can be in this city for 10 years and you don't even know how the system works. But you don't know. You know only one area. Rusham, Bromley, Catford, Woolwich. And that's all you know. Hello, Tom. You have never been to Tower Bridge. You don't know the, 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 the sites that are there. You don't know how they kill people here. How they kill people here. You don't know how the system works. You need to spy where you're going. Families you're going to get married to. Spy. Spy them. It could be witches, you know. Yeah. I told you about a story of my auntie who had this young man who young man who married her only daughter yeah, in Africa beautiful daughter young man finished a course degree at university got married excited and all of a sudden that cousin of mine went downhill demons started coming and tormenting her and they, this family where, we, where my cousin got married they knew what was happening so all of a sudden they disappeared from the city, took her somewhere there in eastern Uganda, western Uganda, deep there in the village. And my aunt went there looking for her daughter. She had hair falling like over her shoulders. And when she saw her daughter, she cried because her daughter was, all the head was shaven, clean shaven. She was mentally disturbed, possessed. Because there are demons in the family, the husband's family, which are tormenting my cousin. Because they were stopped from getting married. Things are holding them. Now, as soon as the boy married, the things are possess, possess, possessing my cousin. Yeah. My aunt was telling me that they spent a, the night in a room as full as, as a house as big as this platform over here. And she said to me that at night, because she was praying that when is it going to come to come to the night? Because at night, the husband and the father of the husband were like, because that room was so small and there was only one door out, there's no electricity in that part of Africa. And she told me, because she went with um, a sister of hers, she told me that at night, things were possessing the man and the, the husband and the father. And they were like, like, like lions roaring at night. And she was praying for daylight to come. You need to spy where your people are getting married, guys. And she said to me, she knew she was finished. But thank God morning came. And she ran with her daughter, brought her back to Kampala. And the daughter got healed. But you have to be careful who you make friends with. Hallelujah. It's especially for you young ones. Because as I said, when you see us here, you are seeing the edited version of you. But you need to have some spies around where you are going. Somebody say amen. Amen. Don't know whether we know the education system here as parents, how it works. Sometimes you stumble into things. My child is doing this, but you don't know where they are going. How victimizing it is. But we serve a mighty God. Amen. And you can always ask the Holy Spirit to come and spy for us. Amen. Go before us. Praise God. Amen. The problem is, the report that came back to Joshua was a, a, a report of contempt. 
They said the city is so small. Just you don't even have to come. Yeah, just send about 3,000 men and we're going to defeat. And that's what is killing us sometimes. We are full of content because we think, we see the world as, we are so self-centered in seeing the whole world. We think we can just walk in there and take whatever we want to take. I was so small, but was almost going to kill the whole of Israel. They said, you know what, the city is so small, we can go there and roll it and just take it. And we come here with our small mentality from wherever we are coming from. And we think we can take over all over Britain without spying in the land and so showing, seeing uh, the, the, the country in contempt. Praise God. Amen. They came back. I beat them really good. That small city, I. They came back running. Came back running and then they told Moses and Joshua that we've been defeated. And said, what? The small city? Came back crying and then they cried unto God. So Lord, why? Why us? How come you've been defeated? You know that uh, blame the others syndrome. They fell down because they are crying, they are defeated, and they're blaming God. Say, so Lord, why did you do this to us? And that's what happens, you know, from the time Adam was created. When God came to him and said, What have you done? He said, It's the woman. I thought it was only us, but when I read the Bible, it's very few people in life who take the blame for their failure or for their misfortune. It's always someone, it is always someone else. If you ask a black man why he's not successful, he's the white man. If you ask the husband why is this, he's the wife. There's always something holding us back. We are not, we are never inward looking, but we are always outward looking, looking for problems. If it is your son, your son has done something, they said, my son would have been okay, but it is the friend that he got that caused them that. And probably the other son, the other family is saying it is your son who caused the problems. Mm -hmm. The foreign nature of man is always looking for someone to blame. Always. The foreign nature of man is always looking for someone to blame. I would have been successful, but remember that man who was found, the paralyzed man who was found at the pool by Jesus Christ? And he said to him that, you know, do you want to be healed? He put on the foreign nature of man and said, I would, but no one pushes me in when the time of. So the question is, do you want to be healed? And many of us have got that thing. I would have been fat by now if it wasn't for my aunt who bewitched me. But we have got now the power of God. I'm using it to break all those curses. I would have been well than the white man. Africa would be far than the white man, even up to now. It is you causing this. Now, okay, the white man came and left, but now I would have been well off, but ask your neighbor, who do you blame for your failure? Who do you blame for your failure? Somebody said I'm not a failure. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And you're looking for someone to blame for every kind of misfortune. Everything that happens to us. Even when you're walking and you knock your feet on the stone, you're looking for somebody who left that stone there. You've not, and there's no one. Even when you're fall, walking down the street and you fall down, maybe you slipped and fall down, the first thing that comes to your mind is you're looking for someone to blame, but then you can't see anyone there. <laughs> And then you blame the road. 
the people who cause problems, they should have done better. Somebody say amen. 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 And the, the Lord comes to them, God comes to them and says, it was not me. It is you who broke the protocol. It wasn't me, but you. And sometimes God comes to us and says, instead of you crying to me, first look into yourself mm. and see what's going on. Yeah. Pastor Frank was saying here that when you point a finger like this, yeah. there's four of them pointing towards you. Yeah. Sometimes it's always good to first ask the question that what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. sure. Where did I go wrong? Yeah. Before you pray, blame the whole system and the whole world and the United Nations as well, plus their Secretary General, first look into you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. First look into you. He said, God said it was not me. It was you. I did not lead to your failure for you to be bitter and coming back running. This time it was you. And Joshua gathers himself and then he says, you know what? What have I done? So in these, uh, going through this quickly, he took stock and started counting, gathered the whole of Israel, said, what did we do wrong? Do you know, it, and it was only one person, when it came to counting, it was only one person, and Akan, as we said, he had taken some of the devoted things which of God. And for that one man, he led the whole of the nation of Israel to be defeated. One man alone caused the defeat of the whole of Israel. Just one man. And I was saying, God is not fair. You know, one man can lead to the whole destruction of a family. By you doing the wrong thing, you can cause the whole family to be defeated. And by you doing the right thing, you can cause a blessing to the entire family Amen. and generations to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This man Akan had taken the Akan had taken things, he went and the, his fellow because when he took them, no one saw that. But God had seen it. And when they went out to fight, they came back running. One man can lead to an entire family to be destroyed. I saw a family um in Uganda, it was in Masaka. A maid came with HIV in the house. And what happened? Because of this demon of adult and fornication, the husband is the first one who used the maid, young girl. He got infected. The family had five sons, and each one of them were sneaking into the bedroom of the maid different times, and the entire family was killed. The mother was killed because she got infected, the husband, and the five sons. One person the family. Praise God. Amen. Be careful what you do in the darkness because it can lead to the demise of an entire generation. Even to the church. One of us can go out there and open up a crack. An opening for demons because demons have been looking for it to attack real life church. And one of us goes out there, does whatever they do and they lead to the defeat of the whole entire church. Ah, ah. One man can cause the entire nation of Israel to be defeated by a small nation. Small nation like that. Because when they spied, there was no need for us to send, no need for them to, to send the entire army. Something small like that can defeat an entire church because one of us can break ranks. Turn to your neighbor and say, do not break ranks. Praise God. Amen. And I've seen this in families where a man goes out, commits adultery, sleeps with a woman somewhere there, brings so many other, by the time he comes back, other demons are following him. He comes into the house, poverty enters as well. Misunderstandings. Praise God. Amen. You're asking me where? I saw that in the book of, uh, the book of Samuel. There was this man called David. Remember him? He saw somebody's wife. Somebody's wife brought him, slept with him, 
And God came and punished him. And God said, actually, for this, what you've done, the sword will not depart from your house. The punishment was so severe that at one time, the whole kingdom of Israel was almost divided and broken because of what David did. His own son took his concubines and slept with them on the pulpit. There was infighting in the house because his own son raped his own daughter just because of what David did. Son and son, his son raped his sister, the daughter, daughter and son, sister and brother. And then murder entered the house, the whole house, because Absalom mm. took a sword and killed his own brother. Mm. Just because of what David did when he went out. Be careful what you do mm. in the darkness. Because you can cause the entire church to be defeated. Mm. One man, Hitler, caused the world war. World war. Mm. One man. Do you know why? Because he was a racist. That's all he was, a racist. Hatred for Jews and Africans and black people. And he caused the whole war. Entire war came to blows because of one man. Praise God. Amen. Be careful what you do. Ask your neighbor, are you going to be a blessing? Are you going to be a gateway for a blessing? Or a gateway for destruction? And some of the things we are fighting in church today is... They are brought by one man. One man can cause the entire family to suffer. Praise God. Praise God. But the funny thing is with God, he pointed where the problem was. And he said that once you deal with it, then I'll deal with you. There are certain things in life that you've got to deal with before you move on. Because once there's something, because they came back and they lined up tribe by tribe. And then clan by clan until they reached the real source of what happened. And you know, Joshua was ruthless in his methods. He said that we've got you, we warned you, do not do this. And they took stones, they killed the entire family. And they heaped stones around there and said, No, because we're dealing with it, we are burying it. And they said, Okay, now we are going. And God said, I'm going to be with you. And when they went, they came back with victory. Now, there are certain things in our life which are creeping us. However much we continue to hide them, they will be the source of our defeat mm -hmm. until we deal with them. Yeah. You will go back and cry unto the Lord that, Lord, why, 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 until you deal with the real issues, they will be delivered. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Am I saying anything that's yes. com com communicating or com connecting with anyone here? Mm. Until you deal with it, you may hide it. Because with this, with Akan, no one knew. Mm. He was dressed up nicely. So you're going to one who was smiling. Because what he did, no one knew except God. But today we are breaking everything. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I guarantee you that tonight, today we are dealing with it. So that we move out of this place victorious. And you're going to come back with a testimony that we are victorious. Whatever has been defeating us and creeping us, we are putting it before God and we are burying it today. Yeah. And then we shall come back victorious. As you read on, we won't have time to read there, but the Bible says it was buried there. They stood up and they went and attacked I. And this time they went in the power of God because God gave them a plan. And when the eye, people of I saw them, they say they thought that you're going to do the same thing we did before. But this time they came to that battle, when they are totally sanctified and totally ready for the battle and they defeated the eye. And my thing today is that whatever small thing has been defeating you, we are coming against it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And your life will not remain the same because you are coming back victorious. Amen. They defeated the eye and they moved on. Amen. And I guarantee you today we are defeating the eye Amen. and we are moving on victorious. Amen. Do me a favor and ask your, your friend that is there anything you are hiding? <laughs> Have they answered you? <laughs> wait, wait for an answer. <laughs> Let's do an audit check in our lives. Let's do an audit check in our lives. <laughs> Praise God. 
<laughs> Praise God. The thing of God that once gives you another way of walking, you've got to make sure that you pass that stage before you go to the next one. You know our God is a funny God. He does not just promote you. He will wait for you to, to finish that exam. He does not care how many times you repeat it. You may repeat as many times and our God does not say that because now you are old, move on. No. You will stay in that class until you pass. You know, most of you here parents, you've gone visiting like when your kids are in primary school. The difference now between the secondary and the primary. You know the primary school, um, I go to a parent's evening for um, Christabel. The chairs are so small. Even when you go as a parent, you sit in that small chair there and you're, you're even uncomfortable. <laughs> so you want the meeting to end quickly, <laughs> to go away. But you know you can be grown up and still in that small chair. Yes. Because the class is <laughs> the class is too too the class is too small. Kids are so young, but because you failed a test and God is waiting for you to take charge and then pass that test. But you are there failing every single time and you're becoming uncomfortable. You come to church angry, you go home angry because you failed to pass that test. But until you pass that test, you won't go to the next stage. I was never taken until they have dealt with issues in their house. There are certain things that are failing us because you have not dealt with issues. And God is because God says, it's not me, it's you. So the audit was done by Joshua and the people of Israel. It was not done by God. There are certain audits you are going to do, certain checkings you are going to do. And that's not going to be done by God, but by you yourself. And check, I know for sure, you know what, this is where it is. And then God will give you the grace to move on. Is there anybody in there with me this morning? Yes. And God is waiting on us to do the test. We are going to go back and recit and recite until we pass the test. Some of us, the chairs are becoming uncomfortable. Too small. Now when I go to visit, like, um, um, because now Daniela is in the secondary school, you go there, the chairs are different. They're a little bit more comfortable. And when you go to the, the form six one. They are much more comfortable there. So there is always that progression. And you know the education, education system in this country is totally different from what we came through. Those of you who remember. You sit exams, you pass and you only move on to the next class. But in this system here, it depends on how old you are. You move on. They just push you. <laughs> Whether you are tall or short, they just push you. But in God's kingdom, it's not like that. You're not just pushed. Mm. You have to pass that test. Mm. I has got to be passed. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor that you're passing that test tonight. You're doing a receipt. And sometimes to us, you dream. When you're like at that stage, spiritually you dream. Every single time you go for an exam, you're not prepared. You are sitting there doing the exam and you see the table going, moving that way. You see the paper is being thrown all by by wind because there are things that are, you are failing at in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. You go to sit an exam in a dream and then you see yourself, you, you are naked. And everybody is laughing at you. We are passing that test tonight. Amen. Can you stand up on your feet and you do an audit check? You're going to check yourselves. And this is something that we do ourselves. There are things which have been tripping us. Um, we are, we are thank God that we have crossed River Jordan. We thank God because we have seen Jericho falling down. But now we've come across I, and the I is defeating us. So I'm not going to rely on the testimony of yesterday alone. We want this small eye to disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to be defeated. Yes, thank God for the things we've received. We've crossed River Jordan. We've come across um, Jericho. And we've seen Jericho falling down. Now this eye is becoming a thorn in our flesh. We've got to defeat eye in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This small thing, eye is becoming a headache in us. It's becoming a headache. You are very good at one area, in one area, but you are feeding these small things. And you are asking God to deal with that. But before God comes to deal with them, let us present them before God. 
the areas that you are hiding and no one sees this. We talk about the great victories, but the small defeats which are there are becoming great in our lives. They're becoming a thorn and you're bringing them before God tonight. Speak unto your God. Ask him to have mercy upon you to forgive you where you have erred and failed as a person, as an individual. Sometimes for the trouble you've caused your own family. Father, I pray that you may have mercy upon your people. That today, in the name of Jesus Christ, you may come and touch each and every one of us, O Lord. That chains be broken, King of Glory. I know there is enough power there for now, now for anointing, my Lord, to bring your people far, to, to bring your people back into onto the path of their destiny, destinies, O Lord. Some of them here have been defeated by small things. They have crossed River Jordan. They've come across Jericho and they've seen Jericho falling down. But I is failing them, my father. The small cities they cannot take because of the small things which are in our homes, in our cupboards, oh God. But today, my father, God, I pray that you revive your people, encourage them, empower them, my father, God, that I be able to overcome. And everything that has been operating in the darkness, in their homes, in their hearts, today I remove in the name of Jesus Christ, my God. I remove in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that I may empower them, oh God. Pour your spirit upon them, my Father, that I may be able to overcome. Every small thing that has been causing defeat in their lives, oh God, in one area or another, I command to disappear today. Command to disappear today in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray for someone here who has been going through a lot of trouble because of the defeat of that small eye. I pray for them, my Father. Encourage them, my Father God. Revive their hearts, O God. Where there has been confusion, O Father God, I pray that we bring credit and peace in their hearts, O Lord. Give them the grace to overcome that your name will be glorified. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.